What's up, friend? Thanks for joining us again. We are in the series where we're building out a blog and we've built out authentication. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how we associate posts with a current user, assuming that we have some authentication mechanism in place, whether we've built it ourselves, which again, I don't recommend. I highly recommend using some tool to help you with authentication that has been really battle tested and is bulletproof. Um, I would rec I, I personally use Devise a lot of times. You, you might also use a third party provider like uh, Auth0 or something like that. In this episode, what we're gonna do is talk about how we can use that current user to scope or limit access or sort of do some authorization, just basic authorization for creating posts, listing posts based on that current user. All right, so here we are in the posts controller. In the very first episode, we scaffold this with Rails G Scaffold and talked about all the different pieces. So if you're curious about that, you can head back and check out that post or that, that episode. In this episode, what we're gonna do is use this, uh, we're gonna use this method current user in order to limit access to the posts that are being returned in this, this standard view to only those posts created by and related to the current user. So the very first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a current user logged in before we even see this page. We should not even be able to go to slash posts unless we have a current user. So this is where we talk about before filters. So we're gonna say, or before actions, right? So in the posts controller, we want to ensure that there is a current user. So we're gonna say before action, ensure current user. You might also see this called like require current user or require logged in user. There's a bunch of different ways that you might, you might call this. So let's call it ensure current user. And we're gonna write this as a method on the application controller so that we can reuse this sort of filter in other, uh, in other controllers in the future. So we're gonna say def ensure current user. And the way this method works is we're gonna see if there's a current user and if there's not, we're gonna redirect. So if uh, current user.nil, then we want to redirect to uh, like just the root route right? So uh, root path or whatever. So if the current user or if the, this, when we call this current user method, if the value we get back is nil, we're going to redirect to the root path. And when we're defining a before action, if there's a redirect that's called inside of a before action, then the, a the other actions don't actually execute. So we're not going to run index. We're not going to run show. We're not going to run new or anything if there's no user. So let's head back over to our controller, refresh the page undefined local variable or method root path. So this should just, let's just go to the like root, I don't know, uh, slash, I don't know what it's actually called, refresh. All right, so we're sent back to the root path. If we try to go to like slash posts again, we're kicked out. We try to go to like slash posts slash three, kicked out again. So we need to be logged in in order to see any of those, those uh, routes that are for the posts controller. So let's go to sign in and we're gonna enter our email and password. And recall in the last episode, we built out authentication from scratch. So now we have a current user that is logged in and we're able to see slash posts. We can see posts one or, uh, you know, we can edit it. We can go back. Um, we can destroy these posts or whatever. We can create new posts, test, test, uh, and create the post. And then we can go to like slash posts again. We can see all these posts. This is fantastic, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to update the post model so that posts can be associated with a user. So right now, as we have it, the only thing that a post has is a title, description, and then some other fields for ID, created at, updated at. And we wanna add a new column in there so that posts can be associated with a current user. So let's go write a migration, Rails G migration, add user to posts, user colon, references By using references that should create a association for us so we're saying add reference to the posts table that's going to point out a user cannot be null and it is a foreign key foreign key means that at the database level we are going to enforce referential integrity meaning that like you can't have a post a row in the posts table that does not have a, an ID that points at a valid user in the users table. So we're like gonna maintain some referential integrity there. 
So that is going to be a foreign key out to the users table. And you can also do things like if you delete a post or if you delete a user, delete all of its posts or, you know, there's a, there's ways to like cascading delete the related items. Anyways, this should, I think this should work. Let's say rails, rails db migrate. Okay. When we try to migrate this, we get this giant error. It's super scary. PG non null, no blah, blah, blah. Column user ID contains null values. That's because we already have posts in the database. We've already got these, these three posts. They're in the database and they don't have user IDs. So when we try to add this new column that has to be like referred to by the users table and it doesn't have any of that, it crashes and burns. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Rails console here and we're going to say post.destroy all. And then we're going to try to run this again. So there should be no more posts in the database. Okay. So now we have successfully migrated and we needed to do that because, um, yeah, because we had to remove all the posts that did not have valid references to users. So now if we go refresh this, it's going to be no posts left. That's fine. Right? So we can still create a new post. Um, but when we try to attempt to create it, it's actually going to fail because now we're seeing non null, you know, the user ID has to be filled in. So the way this works right now, inside of the posts controller here, we're creating the post and we're passing in post params, but recall that post params only accepts the title and the description. So we're trying to create a new instance of a post object with that title and description that was passed from the front end, but nowhere to be seen is the user ID. So how do we get the current user associated with this brand new post? Well, one way we could do it is we could say like permit um, user ID, right? And then we could add like a hidden input or something that had the user ID on the front end. That's a bad idea because anyone could, could change that ID on the client and pass in whomever's user ID they want. So we don't want to accept the user ID from the client because we don't trust clients. We don't trust users. Users are, users are shady. There's, there's some shady users out there and they're going to try to do funky stuff. So we don't want to trust that the user ID is passed in from the client. Instead, we want to use that authentication mechanism or that authorization mechanism that we built out as part of current user, right? Because that's using those signed and encrypted session cookies that can't be really tampered with and you can't really change it to another user. So instead of passing in the user ID here, what we're going to do is we want to pass in the user ID when we create the post. We could say, we could also say like at post dot user ID is equal to current user dot ID. Remember that like we have to have a current user to even view this page. And um, here we can call this after we've initialized post because this doesn't actually persist it to the database. The error we're seeing on this page is happening when we try to save the post. You can see it's on that line. So we could technically do it like this in two lines. However, there's another way that we can do this. So let's actually, let's actually uh, go back here. We'll refresh the page. Um, test with user, test with user, whatever. Click create post. All right, post was successfully created, right? And now if we look in the database, uh, post.last, we see there is a, a post here. It has ID seven, title description. Uh, I think I need to reload. Um, post.last. Okay, so now we can see the user ID is user ID four. So now if we say like user.find four, that's gonna give us back the, the user who's currently logged in. That's wave at CJF dev, right? And so, that current user is now associated with this post. Okay. So what we could do is if we tried to say like u equals user dot find four and u dot posts, wouldn't that be nice if we could just say like u dot posts and it gave us back all of the posts that were related to that user. Or if we could say like p equals post dot last and then say p dot user and it would give us the user that was related to that post. That would be like super convenient. Uh, and it turns out there's a way to do this and it's through active record associations. So we're going to go into the post model and um, whichever model has the foreign key. So in this case, this posts table is where the foreign key lives, right? User underscore ID is the foreign key. It's not the primary key. It's the foreign key. It's not the, it's not the ID. It's the thing underscore ID. Okay. So this is the, the model whose table contains the foreign key. That's where I always start building my associations and that's where the belongs to is always going to be. It always belongs here. So we're going to say belongs to colon user. By saying belongs to user, 
application record has methods under the hood that knows how to associate this post and look up that user model. So now if we were to come back over here and pull up that post, post.last, and say p.user, now we get back the actual user for that post. So we're seeing that user model come back. So that's great. Now we can still, we still don't get p.user.posts. We don't get to see all of the posts for the user because we have to go to the user model and we have to add another type of association here called has many. So here we can say has many posts. And by doing has many, it knows that it needs to go into its associations, singulars, class, and find the foreign key that points back at this class based on its, uh, its name underscore ID. And it will now say select star from posts where user ID equals um, self.id basically. So whatever the ID is of this user. So that's pretty cool. So we can say reload. And now we can say like u equals user.last, u.posts. And we see nothing. What? Okay. U, oh, because user.last is seven. So u equals user.find four, and then u.posts. And now we see the post that we just created. Okay. So that's cool. Um, so now we can go either way. So we can say like u.posts.first.user, and that should give us back the user. Et cetera, et cetera. So we've got these like circular associations or relationships between users and posts. What's super cool is that now that we have this has many posts association, we can do something called building through the association or yeah. So we're going to build through that association. So we're actually going to say current user dot posts dot new instead of using the class name there. Um, so instead of doing this, instead of doing this, we can now do this. Um, so this, instead of doing the class name dot new, now we're saying current user dot posts dot new. And by building through the class or by building through the association, we still get back an instance of the same type, but the ID, the user ID is going to be set. So let's actually do that over here. So you is still a user. So we can say you dot posts dot new, and that's going to give us back a new post and the new post. Notice this, the new posts user ID is already set for us by default. It doesn't have title description or whatever. So um, it is what it is. But uh, when we pass in post params, that's where it's going to get the title and description. And when we save, that's when it's going to get the ID created updated that. So this is how we create a post that is associated with a current user in one line. Super handy. And now we have associations. So, all right. So we come back over here. Uh, we can we can see the show page for this post. We can edit the post. We can you know update it back whatever. See the posts here. Um, now if we log out, let's sign out or register. And this is going to be a new author, Tony. Tony at example.com. Tony's going to be very prolific. We're going to log in as Tony. All right, we just created Tony. We're still logged in as us because actually let's fix that now. So in the users controller. When we log in, let's also session uh, user ID is equal to at user ID. All right. So now when we sign in as Tony at example.com, we are signed into Tony at example.com. Um, and if we create a new post, let's create a new post. This is like uh, Iron Man. Oh, yeah, Tony Stark. Tony Stark. All right. So now we're going back to slash posts. Now we see the posts from both the uh, wave at CJAV dev and from Tony. Okay. We can actually update our posts thing. So it showed the author, but what I wanted to do was limit it. So I can only see the posts that I created sort of like a diary, right? Right now we can see the posts that anyone created. So if we go back to our posts controller up here, instead of saying post at all, now we want to say current user dot posts. Okay. This is going to return that association that we had that we just created in the user model. And now if we refresh the page, we only see the posts that we created. So if we go to the show page, we see posts eight, we can see the post we created. And if we go back to posts, we can see, we can see only the posts we created. If we go back to show though, we notice that eight is here in the path. And if we're like a really clever user, super smart, and we're like, oh gosh, you know what? If ours was the eighth post, I wonder what was the seventh post. So then they click, they type in seven and they're able to see the post from the other user. We don't want that to happen, right? 
And so what we can do is we can go back to the terminal or back to the uh, back to our controller. And instead of just setting set post based on post.find, again, we're going to use that association. So current user.posts.find. So now if we try to see post seven, if we refresh the page, boom, active record not found. In production, this would show a 404 page. This is exactly what we want because this user is not allowed to see post seven, but they are allowed to see post eight. Okay. So now if we go back, we can create another post. You know, this is a, uh, I don't know, pepper pots, whatever. Okay. So now we can see post eight, we can see post nine, and we can see all of the posts that Tony created. And if we were to log out, which I guess we need a log out button. Let's go at that. So in the application, like uh, HTML ERB, in this template, if we're logged in, let's also add a link. Um, link to, I guess we're going to call it like uh, log out, log out. And we will say method. Actually, we'll just go log out and we'll say this is going to the, um, gosh, what is the routes? Sign out. It's going to go to the sign out path. All right, let's see if we get a, okay, we got a link. It's going to go to sign out. That's an unknown action. We'll go to our sessions controller. And down here at the bottom, we need to add a method for destroy. And this is going to say session user ID is equal to nil. Okay, because this is how we logged in. This is how we're going to log out. And then we want to redirect to the sign in path. Okay, if we refresh the page, we're redirected back to the sign in. If we try to go to posts, we're redirected back to the root. And if we go to uh, sign in and we sign in as wave, and we're logged back in, we can only see our post, right? If we show it, we can see post seven, but we cannot see post eight because that's not our post. So we can come back over here to uh, posts. Um, but there is another weird one, right? Where we can see show post seven. Um, we can't see post eight, but can we edit it? Uh, no, great, because set post is, is the thing that's setting it. Um, all right, so let's go back to post seven. We're gonna get, we're gonna, we gotta get real fancy here. So we're gonna say edit, and then we're gonna inspect the form for this edit, and we're gonna try to edit another post that's not ours. So we're gonna edit, we're gonna try to edit post eight and pass in something new, like uh, Hackor, Hackor. And we're gonna say update post. Oh, authenticity token invalid. Okay, did we lose that? We lost something in our invalid authenticity token. Did we mess with the authenticity token? Ah, I wonder if that authenticity token got smarter and is like now matching the route too, or something. Um, I don't know. Test, or let's see, like changed update post. Oh, it might be updating it. I think it did update it and we redirected to post eight. So if we look in the, in the, in the server log here, we received a patch uh, to post eight and we passed in our description, which is changed. Um, and then we got a 404. Okay, great. So it looks like it did not change it, but let's just confirm reload post.find8. Okay, great. It still says Iron Man. Whew. All right. That was that was scary. Okay. So let's go back to our posts controller and see if there's anything else we need to update here. This post this this post.new is fine. That's that's okay. We don't care that that one doesn't have a current user because we're just creating a dummy post for the new route. That's totally fine. Um, we've got our create is updated up, um, right. So everything else now is scoped to the current user for posts. So now users are not allowed to mess with each other's posts. And this is how you would set up like some really basic authorization and also how you would associate objects with a current user. It's almost always your controller actions when you have some sort of authentication or dashboard or whatever are always almost always going to be building through that current user. Um, and that is like the current user method is a pattern that device also uses. So that should be useful. Uh, hopefully that was a useful exercise. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.